Welcome back to IAS Tech. In today's Angular tutorial, we are optimizing API calls. You will learn how to avoid pitfalls and enhance your app's responsiveness. Excessive API calls can slow down your app and server. Let's solve this with Angular's powerful RxJS library and some practical coding strategies. Let's start by creating a new Angular project with if you don't have it already. So to create a new project, you already know that just type this command ng new project name, press enter. This will create a new project for you. Once project is created, you can go into that folder that would be created and open it in your favorite editor. I already have created my project and it is opened in my VS code and it is currently running. So I don't need to create it again. Okay, if you still want to learn how to do it visually, you can just go to my YouTube channel. I have covered it already. You can learn from there as well. And to simulate real world scenarios, we will use JSON placeholder for our API endpoints. This is the website for JSON placeholder. You can also use it for testing purpose. First of all, let's see what happens without the optimization. So let's implement a basic function in our component so i'm going to my app.component.ts file so first of all let's create our form control but before that make sure that you have imported the reactive forms module so make sure to import it in this way once that is done go back to the app.component.ts file and add your property uh, search control is equal to new form control make sure to import the form control as well like this and once that is done done it's time to connect it with our input so this is how our input is looking like right now here just add form control directive in this way this input was, would be connected now just to double check if it is connected and being updated we will just display the value you can see that the data it is being updated Okay, so next we need to subscribe to the value changes in this uh, keyword. So for that, let's go back to our app.component.ts file. And in the constructor, first of all, we need to inject a service private HTTP, HTTP client service. Now let's subscribe to the value changes. This dot search control dot value changes. And then we need to subscribe to it like this and this would give me the parameter in this callback callback function that is the turn that we have provided in the search input and once we get the changes here in this function we can call our backend so let's do that this dot http dot get and pass the http s json placeholder instead of users here we need posts title like is equal to and give it the term let me change the type of string so that we could add template variables in it okay now we need to subscribe to this get method as well let's console this data okay let's see if that is working we can see that it is working it is giving us the data we just need to display the data in the html so for that i'm going to create a property posts empty array and here i will create a div and let's display the items from the posts array so once we receive the data we will update the posts array variable Okay, you can see that it is adding the titles. Let me just make quick improvements in the styles. So for that, I will add flex direction to column. And also I want to add some gap between every title. Actually, we should move this flex styles to the parent. Okay, great. And you can see it is showing all of the titles. So you can see it is working. So let me show you in the network tab. Go to the network. So here, as we type, each keystroke sends a request. For example, I type again 
you can see here this is inefficient and can overload the server you can see it is sending request for every keystroke now let's add debouncing and switch map to optimize this process so go back to the app.component.ts file and now uh, for now let me move this part in a separate function search okay and let me remove this for now here instead i will use dot pipe function from the rxjs and in that we will use a function debounce time 500 so this will wait for 500 millisecond after the last keystroke so that's mean if any uh, another keystroke happens between that 500 millisecond it will ignore that it will consider only after 500 millisecond so, and this counter would reset uh, once uh, you have provided the keystroke next let's add distinct until changed make sure to import it as well and call it here this will ignores the request if the search term has not changed next we need to pass switch map and this dot search term so let's expect that property in here term and let me return this response we should not subscribe it here because we are already subscribing here so i can just get rid of that and this error has gone and after that we don't want to hit the backend api if if there is no term so for example if there is an empty term then we should return the observable of an empty array otherwise we should return the response of this api hit okay now let's quickly test it so here let's type something and let's see i'm i want to search this one so type d-o-l-o-r-e-m and you can see it did not hit the backend api at every keystroke it just did that once i have done typing in my input so you can try something else as well you can see that i have typed so many characters but it did not add a lot of it, it did not hit the backend api for a lot of time so this is now very helpful so now it's time to explain things a little bit further so with this debounce time we prevented the app from making api calls with every keystroke okay and with this distinct until change ensures we don't make a new call if the term hasn't changed and finally this switch map is the real game changer it cancels any outgoing api request if a new value comes in so if user types a and then a b uh, and the a request is cancelled in our case the <coughs> response comes too early so that's why uh, you may not feel the difference but for example you have uh, uh, entered a keyword and it still taking some time but meanwhile you added another keyword then it will cancel the previous uh, uh, api request and it will execute uh, it will execute a new one next let's add caching to prevent repeating the same request for the same search term here i am going to create a property private cache record type and it is going to have any now here i will wrap it in another in another if and in this if i will check if this dot cache term if there is a cache then use that cache otherwise hit that api request so this is how i will use the cache i will use i will return of that will create an observable of this dot cache term so i am passing the term that will give me the relevant cache from this record but if there is no cache then it will hit that api endpoint with the get method but we will pipe function here and we will tap into it by using the tap function okay and in the tap function i'm going to get a resp i'm going to call it pass it a callback function and we will return this dot cache term so whatever response you will get we will give it to the cache term so in this way we are continuously updating or creating our cache once cache is created it will next time if the request comes with the same query and url it will then uh, 
use that cache in this way we will avoid a lot of overload now let's quickly test it so for example here i'm going to type hello so it has uh, created this request now i'm going to type something else now i will type the hello again and this time it should not hit the backend endpoint you can see that there is no network api call right now you don't see any results so let me just uh, type some string that is more related with the titles so let me so i'm going to search for this one you can see it uh, hit the api endpoint with this query string but now let me just type something else clear it and do that again this time you can see that there is no network api call but we still got the result our search function now first checks the cache if the term is already there we return the cached result if not we fetch and cache them so this reduces the load and improves the speed we have just seen how debouncing distinct until changed switch map and caching can drastically reduce the api calls this leads to a smoother faster app that scales better you are now equipped to optimize api calls in angular with rxjs operators use these techniques wisely in your projects for a superior user experience if this tutorial was helpful then please leave a like subscribe and share it with other developers if you have any questions then please leave them in the comment section i will try to answer them as soon as possible thanks for watching see you next time happy coding